Hi, chain breakers. So today I just wanted to talk to those of you who are broken hearted, those of you whose spirit is crushed. Okay. We've all been there. If you have been in a narcissistic relationship or an entanglement or a friendship or family or even a work relationship, if you have been entangled with a narcissist, your spirit, uh, is broken or has been broken, okay? But I want you to understand that God God loves the brokenhearted, okay? He will bind up your wounds. He will be there. He will heal your heart, okay? So there is no testimony without a test first. There is no trial, okay? There is no testimony without a trial. There is no challenge without hurdles to overcome. So understand that these situations happen they are of the enemy, but God can heal you from them, okay? So you want to make sure that you get into God because once you are hurting, there is a temptation to go to the enemy. There is a temptation to go to turn to divination and witchcraft and sorcery and psychics. I've been there, okay? And I went to, I'm going to be honest, I went to a, he called himself a spiritual advisor, Okay. And he told me things and that was not a prophecy from God. Okay. And so when you do that, and I had to repent for that. Okay. I had to repent for that because what you are doing when you allow, uh, soothsayers, and I'm not saying he was a soothsayer, but don't turn to soothsayers and psychics. Okay. Turn to God and God will be there for you. Okay. Don't turn to witchcraft because you know, you, you're going to be hurting. You are going to be hurting, but don't turn to witchcraft, turn to God, okay? Because, and then some of you, as you go through those seven stages of grief, okay, allow yourself, you're going to feel denial when you first enter, you're going to feel like, oh my goodness, like I can't believe this is happening to me. I'm too smart, I'm too pretty, I'm too intelligent, I'm too handsome, I'm too all of these things. I should have known better. But the enemy is crafty, okay? He knows what our woundings are. He knows what is in your generational pattern. He knows the wounds that your ancestors that have been passed down through third and fourth generations through your history, okay? He knows your pathology. He knows how to get in there. He knows what things have been wounded, have wounded you in your past, okay? So you're going to go through those. He he knows what has affected you and he's going to go through those things. He's going to go through your, through your sin to see where there's an entry point, okay? So you're going to be in a state of denial at first. You can't believe that this thing is happening to you. And then once you accept that, then you're going to go to the next level, which is anger. And you're like, I always say, use that righteous indignation. Don't act on it, but use that anger to fuel you. Use that anger to, to be anger, angry at the enemy for what he has done to you. But don't take that anger out on anyone, okay? Or else you'll just be like a narcissist, okay? And God said vengeance is his. Oh, no, there is no, like my husband always says, there's no butt whipping like a godly butt whipping, okay? So allow God to deal with your enemy so that he doesn't have to deal with you. And some of you are speaking witchcraft. Some of you are so angry and hurt that you've allowed a psychic or or someone who is into, you know, cards and tarot readings and, and, and type, tapping into your chakras and your third eye. Leave that stuff alone if you are a believer, okay? Because what people don't realize is that when you are hurting, the enemy wants to come in there and give you a counterfeit God. He wants you to serve false gods. That's through religion. That's through however it comes. But you stick with the true and living God. You stick with the Holy Spirit. You stick stick with Christ, okay? And he will heal you up and he will deal with your enemies, okay? Like the Bible says, a thousand may fall on your left or it, it, your enemy may fall on your left and a 10,000 or a thousand may fall on my right, but no hurt shall come to you in your family. So you allow God to deal with your enemy. Okay. And then you're going to start bargaining. Well, God, man, if, if you just heal me, you know, if you just take this pain away, I'll never do this again. I'll never get into this type of relationship again. Okay. So that's the bargaining piece. Okay. And then you're going to go through well, depression. 
Oh my goodness, there is no depression like that one after you come out of a narcissistic encounter. Okay, you're gonna be down. Oh my, it was some days where I couldn't get out of the bed, where I didn't want to get out of the bed, and it was my children, oh my 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 teenagers that kept me. You know, God put them. You know, and then later my husband. Oh, I had to deal with some things, okay? And I had to look at me and I had to look at every part of me so that I, so it allowed God to examine me and and so he could strip me away of things that he didn't want in my life, okay? And that's and in that from that situation I was born again. So I I count it all joy now. You know, when you get that Holy Spirit, oh, you count everything all joy. And he, God will begin to lift you out of that depression slow day by day, all right? And he'll put that fire in you. So you are lifted out of that and and you're on to the next phase of your healing, okay? And then after depression, there is an acceptance. Like, whew, okay, God, this happened. Well, how do I go on from here? Okay, I accept that this person is a narcissist. I accept that this relationship is over. I accept that this person's, uh, you know, time in my life, their season is up. So when someone is, their season is up, allow them to go. We hold on to people and pain unnecessarily because we are so, we want love so much. We want love so much that we will accept it in forms and in people who are not good for us. We think it is a counterfeit love. It is not love at all, okay? But when we get rid of those toxic people, when we let those people go that we've been holding to, I don't care if it's family, I don't care if it's, it's boyfriend, spouse, whoever it is, okay? If God is telling you to get rid of them, if God is telling them to let, let them go, let them go so he can work on them and he can work on you, but you are no one's savior, okay? So those, you're gonna go, go to that denial, that anger, that bar, Bargaining, that depression, that acceptance, allow yourself to go through those phases, okay? But there's going to be that temptation to turn to things that are not of God because your brain is traumatized. And if you are just getting out of that, or if you are in the middle of that, you want to make sure that you seek um, a, a therapist or, or, you know, a physician, and you want to make sure that you are seeking God, okay? But make sure that you are getting the help that you need, okay? But don't turn to those other things, okay? Because your brain, oh my goodness, your brain has been affected. You are, you have gone through trauma, okay? Your, your, everything, physiologically, everything is, is off in your mind, okay? And you're going to need something to take those levels back to normal. And that's where your physicians come in if, if you need that, okay? But those things should be temporary. That should not be things that you need on a long-term basis, okay? But you want to go to someone that can help you get, your, you know, establish your baseline, get back to your baseline so that you are healthy and able to deal with things, okay? In a, in a right way, all right? So, God said, come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's in Matthew 11 and 28. God will give you the rest that you so desire. Because when you've been entangled with the narcissist and entangled, those are demons, okay? I don't care how how the uh, psychology world looks at it. Those are demons. And you can't counsel demons out of someone, okay? And that's why the, uh, narcissists do not change, okay? So, Again, go to God, have, give him all your pain, tell him about everything that is hurting you. Allow yourself to go through that. Allow yourself to, to, for God to wrap his arms around you and envelop him, you know, just sit at his feet and, and around, uh, allow his love to, to just envelop you and, and comfort you. Okay. Because you're going to need that. That is who you need. Don't get up under another person. Okay, don't create another ungodly soul tie. Okay, don't don't you know get out there in the world and doing things that 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 you simply do not need because there is a consequence to everything. Yes, you can absolutely turn to sorcery, you can turn to witchcraft, you can turn to divination, but when you do that, you are allowing demons into your house, smudging all that stuff. Talking, about, I'm getting rid of the bad energy. All you're doing is sprinkling demons around your house. Okay, so the Holy Spirit. Okay, anoint your house with oil. Fill your house with with God because those spirits are going to try to return. Okay, and that's why so many people go back to the narcissist. Okay, because they haven't kept their house clean. Okay, they have not 
fill themselves with the Holy Spirit and those spirits are going to come back seven times more wicked than the first. Okay, but you stay with God, allow him to heal your broken heart and he, and he will heal you from the inside out chain breakers. All right, so be blessed, go to God and everything and he will help you break those chains. All right, guys, be blessed. Have a good one.